Thank you for joining us this evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, City Council meeting with City of Sodic for November 23rd, 2020. Uh, please take the roll. Dean? Here. Leo? Here. Lewis? Here. Peterson? Here. Stanton? Here. Trester? Here. Beckham? Here. Uh, all members are present. Moving on uh, to uh, approval of minutes of our last meeting of November 19th, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Mayor, this is Garn. Move to, approve, move to approve the regular city council meeting minutes of November 9th, 2020. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Garnett, a second by Peterson to approve the minutes. Any discussion, corrections? I would just like to say, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Chris. I thought they were great. Okay, so we're gonna approve some great minutes. <laughs> okay, so if there's no further uh, discussion, uh, can I take a roll call please on the motion? Lewis? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Truster? Yes. Beckon? Yes. Uh, so the, the uh, motion to approve the minutes was approved unanimously. Moving on to mayor's comments. Uh, I'd like to welcome Lauren Stanton and uh, Scott Dean to their first official regular council meeting. Uh, they did attend our last uh, workshop as their first official function. So uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, this evening, I'd like to give uh, the city a uh, update on our city manager search. Uh, I discussed things that I could share and things I could not share uh, earlier today with uh, Frank Walls from our search committee or our search uh, uh, contractor from Walls Municipal Services. Uh, back in October, uh, the city interviewed three uh, potential uh, search organizations and uh, voted to hire Frank Walsh from Walsh Municipal Services. Frank initially interviewed 21 community stakeholders and took that information and developed a recruitment profile for our city manager position. The profile was published in the Michigan Municipal League and International City Managers Association websites. Also, he also focused on efforts on LinkedIn and Facebook. He completed targeted recruitment for 17 Michigan candidates that fit that Saugatuck profile. His recruiting efforts nabbed 28 candidates from across the country. The total of number of Michigan candidates reached 16. The recruitment, recruitment profile mandated a minimum of a bachelor's degree and experience working with local government. On Monday evening, November 30, we will have a special city council meeting via Zoom to discuss the top 10 candidates that Mr. Mr. Walsh will present to the city of Saugatuck. All 10 candidates have requested confidentiality as allowed under the Michigan Open Meetings Act. Thus, we will be going into an executive session. After a presentation by Mr. Walsh, the council will cut that number to four or five finalists. And those finalists also going forward will be entitled to protection under the confidentiality agreement. That confidentiality agreement uh, can be waived when they formally accept the innovation or invitation to interview. So that's where we sit. A week from today, we will re we will interview. Uh, well, we will not won't interview anybody, but we'll get a rundown on uh, the ten top candidates as presented by our uh, search consultant, and we'll, <clears throat> we will cut that number to four or five. And within two weeks, we will we will conduct interviews of those people before making a final selection. Uh, Karen, you have any city manager's comments? Uh, I did want to say that beginning this morning, we are up to full staffing. No one is out sick or in quarantine. 
So that's a great thing. Uh, also, um, we've had a few requests for the two, 2020 traffic counts on Park Street. I learned today that they're still in the machine. And so Deputy, <clears throat> excuse me, Deputy Flaxtra is going to see if they, if they can download them. And when that happens, I will get them out to you. Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, agenda changes. Uh, one agenda item under guest speakers, we'll add Dean Kappinga from the Allegheny County uh, Board of Commissioners. Is there any other agenda items that wanna be presented or added? If not, our uh, agenda will be, uh, will stand with the one edition of uh, Dean Kappenda as a guest speaker. Next, <clears throat> excuse me, next agenda item, uh, Lieutenant Brad Ensfield from the Allen County Sheriff's Department. Is Brent with us this evening? Hi, can you guys hear me? You bet, you bet, Brent. Hey, hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, uh, knock on wood, uh, we haven't had any uh, COVID issues uh, uh, with your guys' uh, deputies there at the uh, sheriff's office. So um, just uh, hopefully they stay that course. Um, guys have been using uh, good judgment and stuff. So, and uh, pra practicing social distancing and so forth. So that's a good thing. Um, I, on Wednesday, I'll have uh, Deputy Foxtra uh, try to download those uh, statistics from the uh, um, speed signs. Obviously this is a byproduct of you know, our, our enforcement actions and looking at the thing is actually seeing the uh, traffic counts and stuff. So uh, we'll try to compile that data and get that uh, to Karen from uh, uh, that sign and so forth. So um, other than that, uh, it's been, again, still a little busier than I thought it would be uh, for this time of year. Um, definitely some uh, complaints and stuff, nothing that's really outstanding or, uh, you know, abnormal or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, just a, a busier, uh, lots of calls and stuff like that. So uh, does anybody have any questions on anything? Um, Mayor. Yes, Scott. Yeah, uh, thank you, Lieutenant. And, and uh, thank you for the data and, and your um, commitment to getting us that data so the residents on Park Street can get a better picture of, of the situation. Um, I'm just wondering if it's at all possible uh, going forward. Um, I really appreciated what you did uh, at a pre past meeting where you showed data and some graphical charts that kind of represented the flow of calls that, that, that the department gets through the year and the type of calls that you get. Is it at all possible yep. for capturing that on an annual basis? So in the future- Yeah, the yep, I was gonna, oh, oh. sorry, sorry to cut you off. Yep, no, yeah, no, I was gonna, please. yeah, I was gonna do that uh, probably quarterly and then, uh, you know, obviously at a half year mark and then uh, for the full year encapsulated and stuff that, that, that the same calls for service, which that that, that kind of gives you a pretty good snapshot of, you know, if our dispatch calls a deputy and says, hey, you know, there's possible drunk driver, go look for the drunk driver, uh, you know, downtown. It's really not going to pull a complaint number, but it'll have a calls for service. So it's obviously taking a time from a deputy to go do that or if you know, hey, there might be a, you know, stick in the road or a road hazard down, down the road. It might not trip a, a complaint number like your guys are getting the con, uh, complaint logs, but it will, it will show that, you know, they're taking time to have to go uh, do that. So, um, you know, we're not pulling a lot of the complaint numbers that we probably, you know, should, uh, you know, show statistics and so forth. You know, we're, you know, because that just creates, you know, undue paperwork at times for the guys and gals, uh, you know, that, you know, I mean, it really, you know, it really doesn't do anything for, you know, d creating extra paperwork. So, and I'd like to welcome you, you to uh, new members uh, to the boards also. I uh, forgot to mention that. Uh, look forward to working with you guys also. So. Well, well thanks. And, and likewise, and just to, just to complete the thought. Yeah. I, th I think it would be great for the council to get uh, that type of data. I think it will really help us make kind of real data driven, you know, kind of decisions going forward. So the more data we can get and, and the way you presented it graphically was really helpful at one of the previous meetings. So thank you. Yeah, for I was yeah no problem. I was surprised actually between, you know, I, I was just thinking with the COVID and stuff, especially this last summer, and you know, we did have a lot of different calls for service, you know, obviously some of the health and safety things and, you know, some of the other, uh, you know, different calls that came out, um, you know, but just, 
you know, it kind of goes to show that if you have, you know, four police officers, you're going to have about the same amount of calls. If you, you know, if you guys had six or eight police officers down there, you obviously you're going to have more calls. I, you know, it's like uh, when we do drunk driving patrols, you know, I, I'll be astounded when you, when you put three or four guys out there and that's all their job is to do is stop cars, look for drunk drivers on a weekend, you'll know, we'll have six, eight drunk drivers, you know, I'm like, Oh man, there must've been a lot of drunk drivers that weekend. I don't know. Just all the deputies are, you know, busy doing other things. And, these guys focused on it and they're actually caught drunk drivers, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, it just, it goes to show kind of, you know, guys are out there working and stuff and, you know, the complaints and, you know, so forth will come. And, you know, I was really surprised at the, at the consistency of the numbers between the two years. So. Hey, uh, any other council members have any questions for Lieutenant Ensfield? Okay. Uh, Thanks, Brent. We appreciate it. Um, keep up the good work. I well, appreciate it, too, for the support, guys. So, yeah. yeah, if you need anything, give me a shout, and I'll try to get that data uh, extrapolated from the sign. We'll get that fired up and uh, get that to you guys as soon as possible. So, You got it. Thanks again. Our next, next guest speaker, uh, Lisa Mice from the Sodic Douglas Area Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, in our uh, city packet uh, tonight. We had an overview on the Sodic Douglas Convention and Visitors Bureau marketing strategy implementation. I'd like to welcome Lisa, and uh, she's going to provide us a, uh, a summary of this overview. Lisa? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mayor and thank you for um, having me tonight. I met with um, then Mayor Trester several weeks ago and also Karen Doyle on a separate occasion and talked about what the CVB is, is here for, basically. Um, and what we've been doing lately. And they both thought that it would be advantageous for the city council uh, to be made aware of what we've been up to for the past year. Um, so to that end, um, I started with the mission statement, just to keep it very basic, to promote and market the vitality and desirability of the Sogtuck Douglas area as a premier destination. Um, I feel that um, we've been doing that um, and obviously long before I've been on board. Um, but I wanna try to get, well, before I do that, some of you know me and some of you don't. <laughs> so I wanna give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm originally from this area. I grew up in Fenville. I worked at Cranes for four years. All through college, I worked at the Gables. Um, Mark, Mayor, Mayor back then, I worked with Lisa for a long time. Um, and I went to St. Pete's. Um, my dad taught school at St. Pete's. Uh, my grandparents way back used to dance at the pavilion. So I've got some deep roots in the area and uh, my passion for the area runs deep as well. Um, so let's get into the presentation. I know that um, I'm, I've only got so much time and um, I wanna be cognizant of that. So this is the presentation that you all got in your packets, and I'm going to kind of run through it fairly quickly because there are a lot of slides, but since you have them, you'll be able to review them at your leisure. Um, this was put together by um, our marketing firm that we started working with about a, a year and a half ago. They're called Concept A Creative, and they're out of Spring Lake. Uh, they started doing project work for us about a year and a half ago, um, and then about last January, we decided that we would hire them to represent and market for us. So this was the packet that they put together just this past October, so it's very recent. Um, what I want you to kind of pay attention to is that we had to pivot when COVID hit, just like everybody else did. And we anticipated um, budgets being slashed and um, summer not being as good as what it ended up being. So that's what this marketing plan is that you're going to see. Uh, we did a lot of digital uh, advertising. We did a lot of social media, but we pulled back from some main, main things. This talks about who our target audience is, um, our primary audience, as well as our secondary audience. Uh, we also look at, at mm -hmm. what area we wanted to um, promote to and market to. And obviously because of COVID, it became a drive um, proximity that they could drive to Saugatuck. 
Chicago, Detroit, Indianapolis became our market. And that's who we spoke to on uh, digital and social. And then it kind of um, supported that. You'll see that the majority of the visits to our state page came, 29% came from the Chicago, Illinois market, 19 from Detroit and six from Indianapolis. This also get, gives us an indication of maybe those markets in 2021 that we'd like to grow. The tone is just how we choose to speak to them and what our voice should be. Um, you'll see these are all the different areas that we touch on. So in addition to um, regular advertising, whether that be digital, social, or print, or billboard, um, we also have a public relations gal that now is now working for us, as well as a, a social media person. Uh, Lisa, this is Garnett. I'm sorry. Are you advancing the slides or are I you am. just... Okay. Are you I, not I seeing see, them advance? Okay. I see mission statement. Oh, heavens, no. I guess I had to do a new share. All right, thanks, Garn. Yep. So this is what you should have been seeing. <laughs> all the different bubbles and all the different ways that our budget gets split up. And I don't, I'm not gonna go backwards, guys. Um, Social media, Facebook, what's remarkable when you look at these numbers, obviously the impressions 457% up increase we saw, but if you look and compare those numbers from what we were seeing in 2019 and then to 2020, just astonishing the numbers. This is a sampling of um, some of the Facebook posts that we had a lot of engagement on. So if you take a look, um, this one had over 436, 344, um, a lot of people were clicking on these. Same thing with Instagram. Our goal right now, as you can see, is to get 10,000 followers by the end of um, 2021. And uh, the numbers across Instagram are just um, growing as well. Instagram stories is something that our gal also pays close attention to. So you'll see those if you follow us. And um, these are just some of the samples. Twitter, she does um, put some Twitter, some tweets out there. Um, I'm not as concerned with Twitter as I am actually with Facebook and, um, and Instagram. Um, but she did actually, she did get some um, participation in those Twitter, in those tweets especially as everybody I'm sure was remembering those volcanoes from um, last January and February uh, out at Oval Beach. Um, if you don't know, we launched uh, with the help of Concept Day Creative, we launched a brand new website this past July. It's uh, much more user friendly, uh, much more appealing and pleasing to the eye. You can navigate through it uh, very easily. And in addition to the website, we are now um, putting new articles on the website monthly. And as well as the articles, we send out a newsletter to our 14,000 um, readers on a monthly basis. <clears throat> the website articles, all this graph shows you is to make sure that we're hitting all the different um, ideas that there are and we don't repeat ourselves for the article. This is the email campaign I just talked about that goes out monthly. And how many people opened it, what the percentage was, how many sends went out. Then we get into the Google and the Facebook ads that we bought. Um, and you can see across the bottom that we were looking at different audiences with these ad buys. So sometimes we were talking to families, sometimes singles, sometimes the LGBTQ community, but we did spread it across all the audiences that we wanna reach. Print advertising got pulled back this year because of the budget, but we did manage to put out in um, Last winter, this was, I'm sorry, this past January, 2020, this was in Review Magazine in Grand Rapids. And then our Pure Michigan Spring Summer 2020, we had the full page ad. 
our billboard advertising. Um, you can see the spring summer ad, uh, billboard that went up in April. And then the fall that's up right now, it, it was installed September 10th. And that is the Saugatuck Dunes State Park, by the way. It was a beautiful day. And then I know I've been sending these out. I hope that people have been seeing them. We just got one today that uh, Saugatuck Douglas was featured in the Chicago Tribune this past Friday, which was amazing. And they talked about um, Singapore and uh, that Saugatuck has our own little Pompeii that was buried, the city that was buried. So we've been getting a lot of press, a lot of free press, which has been great. And that's what happens when you have someone that works for you, that that's what she does. That's her job is to do public relations. Um, another part of that job with is setting up what's called fam trips or familiarization trips. So influencers and or writers come to the community and they stay here. Um, we typically will comp them or um, comp them dinners and or a night stay. And then they take tours of the area with their family, their kids, and then they write about it. This was one that was here this summer. Her name was Cheryl Eugenio from the Chicago Parent Magazine. They also do a lot of social media. So she posted a lot about the donut boats, about Mich the Mitten Brewing Company. Every place she went, she posted. We just had some new photography happen this um, fall and late summer and early fall. So you're getting a sampling right now of some of those photos that Craig Watson took, obviously down at the Oval Beach and then all over town. And these will be used, um, as I'm sure you guys are aware, um, photography really drives the marketing. So you need to have really good um, photo assets in your coffers to be able to pull from these and use these in the upcoming months. And then we did also take pictures last winter. So we'll have some of these to use this, this season. Um, the last thing that we did with Concept Day was look ahead to 2021. So right now they are working on the marketing plan for the upcoming year. Um, a lot of different things got discussed, what we wanna focus on from digital ads to growing our social media channels, um, promoting experiences in the area, much like um, Airbnb does with experiences. We're gonna focus on that. Increasing our newsletter signups, increasing our market share in different markets. And that's what we've been up to. Okay. Thank you very much guys for letting me talk. <laughs> right. Any council people have any questions for Lisa? Okay, I'd like to thank you once again for taking time out and uh, giving us this information. It's very informative. We appreciate the work the CV CVB does for us and partnering with us too in a lot of in a lot of efforts. It's my pleasure, Mayor. Thank you. you Thanks, bet. Lisa. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dean Kappenga wants to make a few comments. Allegan County Board of Commissioners. Dean. First, thank you. And Lisa, that was fantastic. That was so impressive. Um, wow, what a way to market the city. Uh, just to tell you a little bit of what's going on in the county, I'm I'm uh, very thankful for, you know, we have a little over 350 employees and to think of from courthouse to the road commission to community mental health to it goes on and on. But um, a lot of these people are virtual and yet the function is still happening, I think, in a great way. So I'm very impressed with that. But just to tell you some things that we've been doing, obviously, we passed our 2021 budget. Um, we did an RFP for our courthouse entrance. Many of you, I'm sure, have been frustrated going to the courthouse and seeing how it's just hard to get to anywhere. We're ch changing the design of that. We've just put an RFP out for how that works and you'll be seeing that later. Um, I just wanted to give you some stats on, um, like I'm part of 911. I heard you talking to Brett about just, um, Dean, you mentioned just the importance of having stats. Uh, we just decided to, uh, to try to inform the citizens every month of non-emergency calls, emergency calls, what's going on in the county. And we're going to just, you'll be able to just get it on your on the website of the county and just post on it 
and you'll see what the numbers are for that month. And it would just better inform people to go, are our deputies busy? Is the state police busy in what they're doing? Because uh, many times, you know, we've seen just how negative it's been in the past. And we just want to just show a light on all the positive things that they're doing and the, and the, and the incredible number of calls that they're getting and what, they, what they're involved in. So we're going to try to get that out. Hopefully that will start like in the next month and that will be something that you can just click on and, and see. Also, just for your awareness, um, I'm also part of the Commission of Aging. And these are some numbers just for August. Like we had 590 in-home support visits, 15 adult daycare, 318 people get meals um, delivered to them, 68 seniors get transportation. I know I was giving this report at Lake Town and Linda asked me, she goes, well, how many people get help in Lake Town? Um, so I just gave her this number like a week ago and we, there's 302 people receiving um, millet services through um, COA, Commission of Aging in Lake Town. And um, you know, just, just sort of interesting what they're doing. And then um, just to tell you, obviously we're very excited about the tax limitation. That went through, to think of the voters passing that, I was very thankful for the, um, our medical care facility. If you have know someone who's been there, it's a five-star facility that has simply just been struggling to know and just to make it, they do a tremendous job. And, you know, they're just very, very good. And then I would just say to you that, you know, from, I just wanted to make sure I just got on because I haven't seen you for a while, but we're functioning well. We're, um, even though we've taken some hits with COVID um, because of the CARES Act, we're, you know, it's just sort of balanced its way out and, and financially we're hanging in there. You know, we're doing all right. You know, so the county's doing good. I just wanted to say hi to everybody. If there's some new members, so I'm getting looking forward to meeting you. And um, I just appreciate being part of your meeting and have a great meeting, but um, thank you very much. Question, Mayor? You bet, Ken. Uh, Dean, are, will those police statistics that'll be on the web, will, will they be identifiable by community? Um, I don't think they were. It was, just, it was just sort of a, I think you can, I'm gonna check on that, Ken, I'll get back to you. Okay. I don't know. How, I don't know exactly how they're going to post it. Besides, they're going to post it, but I'll I'll find out. Yeah, as we were saying earlier, it's always better to you know be our, for our residents to be able to have Good. that you know, available on a regular basis. That'd be great. Good idea, Ken. Thank you for the question. I'll get back to you. Okay, thanks. Any other council person have a question for Commissioner Kappinga? If not, we'll move on. Dean, thanks again. Keep up the good work representing our, our community at the Allegan County Board of Commissioners. Uh, this is where we enter, uh, allow comments by the public. If you wish to uh, address the uh, council this evening, please limit your comments to agenda items only. Limit your comments to three minutes. Please identify yourself by your name and your community of residence. Uh, floor is open for anyone who wishes to address the council this evening. See anybody there, Aaron? No, sir, I do not. Okay, all right. There will be another opportunity at the end of the meeting where the public can comment on anything they wish. Uh, so we'll move on to the next agenda item. Request for payments. We we'll have a motion to approve the accounts payable this evening. Mayor, Ms. Garnett, move to approve accounts payable in the amount of $73,718.89. Second. We have a motion by Lewis, a second by Trester, to approve the accounts uh, payable as presented. Uh, are there any questions or concerns? If not, can we have a uh, roll call vote, please? Lewis? Mr. Mayor, yes. You. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. What was that? Um, just going through this. Oh, okay, Lauren. I'm sorry. Is it okay if we ask a couple of questions? Absolutely. Okay, just going through um, the invoices here, I was just curious number five, the flooding pump for $598. I was just curious um, with that pump being installed in June, what this line item is. P, P 
mosquitoes on. Mark? Yeah, Peter, you have that up. Yeah, item. Of, the pump on South Butler burned up probably about five weeks ago. So it's a purchase of a new pump that we have. So that's what it's from. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Lauren? No, that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a roll call on the motion, please. Lewis. Yes. Trester. Yes. Dean. Yes. Leo. Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Beckin? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Peter, pay the bills. Uh, next uh, moving, our next agenda item under an introduction of ordinance, state of emergency declaration. Karen, help us out on this one. Uh, Last month, the legislature passed Public Act 228, which allowed local communities to continue remote meetings through the end of the year. Beginning January 1, there has to be a state of emergency to continue remote meetings. Uh, our charter did not explicitly state that we could do that locally. So I asked Jeff to help us out there and he wrote the ordinance amendment that gives the mayor the power to declare a local state of emergency should we need that. And uh, it also names the city manager as the emergency coordinator. And this would only come into play, well, it, it could, you could do it anytime, but you only need to do it if the state does not continue the, the declaration of emergency because of the COVID. If the council wants to continue doing remote meetings, there would have to be a state of emergency. You know, uh, comments by council? Mr. Mayor? Chris? Uh, Karen, thank you for that. Tell me if we declare that as a state of emergency, will that impact any other services or um, things that we have to do civically? Um, I'm not aware of any. Were you thinking of something in particular? Well, if the city is des uh, designated itself, it's in a state of emergency. Does that impact other uh, things that the city does or has to do for funding or grants or anything like that? How far reaching is that declaration of emergency? Is it just so we can have Zoom meetings? That's why we had it written to continue remote meetings. If there's um, a countywide or a statewide declaration of emergency, there oftentimes is grant funding available to help the locals. Um, I'm not aware of anything if it's just one community. If you have an ability to ask for grant money because of something very local. But us usually if there's something like a flooding event or or COVID emergency where there's extra costs, the, the county does declare an emergency and the, and, and the grant funding would go through them. Um, okay. Mayor, I have a question. This is Garnett sure. for Karen. So I'm just to kind of help us along. It looks like we're, this is kind of like a first reading of this that we would actually, um, vote on this in December at the December meeting. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. So is that regarding uh, Chris's uh, question, is that something you can just kind of check for us to make sure that we're not, um, I guess, tying our hands in a way if we do adopt this? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't how to say it. Was that Chris who was commenting? Sorry. Well, go ahead. No, I was just, I couldn't figure out quite how to say it. I think Garnet put it perfectly. Would it impede us from doing anything else once we declare ourselves in a state of emergency? Is it more far reaching than just allowing us to have Zoom meetings? And I have no idea how it could impact. Just wondered if, if we should maybe find out. But the mayor, and then mayor, just as follow up sure. to that, then maybe we could, if we're kind of into these first, second reading type things, maybe our next workshop then Kerrigan can bring that back to us so we have that full clarification before we vote on it on the 14th. 
Sure, I've got I've got something that I'd like to have checked also, uh, but I'll defer to any other council members. Uh, Mayor, go ahead, Scott. Uh, along this theme, um, just one other thought to consider: um, Would this be something then, given that it is oriented to the Zoom meetings to respond to the pandemic? Do we want to consider putting a, a deadline on this or a timeline where, when it would expire or be reviewed? Well, I would think that that could be part of the motion or uh, that was one of my questions. So, you know, uh, uh, some type of time frame. Yeah, Mayor. But, but the question I have is, does this give the mayor unilateral uh, discretion to, to declare such a state of emergency? Or does it have to go to council for a unanimous vote? Mark? Yeah, uh, Ken. The way I'm reading this is that uh, the mayor has the authority to declare the emergency, uh, but that's only good for seven days. Uh, so unless the council endorses that, uh, it, would, it would go out of effect. So I think that's a check and balance on it. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Reading that that way then, um, would that mean that if we wanted to uh, continue them, we'd have to do, we'd have to re-up it every week in order to have a Zoom meeting? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't say uh, oh, yeah. you need to do that, but you could. Okay, thanks. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I think, um, for example, the county and the state, when they declare a state of emergency, like for example, the health department, the statewide health department, they put a, a three week on it and it expires. I envision that if the city did that, there would also be an expiration date because you wouldn't want to have a de declare emergency that lasted forever. So I think you would put a, a date on it and then revisit it as that date approached to see if you needed to extend it or not. Yeah, Mayor, yeah. I, I agree that that would be an important safeguard to, to add that to the uh, to the uh, ordinance amendment. Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure if you've seen Cindy Osmond's hand up. No, I haven't. Hi, or Cindy. Go ahead, Cindy. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Um, the way that I read this was the state of emergency declared by the mayor would expire after seven days unless extended by council. That doesn't mean that the county couldn't declare it for a longer time or the state couldn't declare it for a longer time. In fact, I believe that um, our county commission has declared a state of emergency that extends through January 31. So the, may the mayor would not have to exercise that because the county already did it until after January 31. And you might want to keep that in your ordinance because who knows what could happen mm -hmm. after this pandemic. There might be a need to declare a state of emergency for some bizarre thing like COVID that might come up in the future. But the intent and the purpose of the ordinance, if, if you had a chance to look at it, the, the purpose was to allow for remote meetings. And it allows for things like a blizzard or a flooding event or other natural or man-made emergencies. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. So, are there are there some things that need to be clarified by Jeff prior to the next meeting? Karen, do you have a, a few things that you want to get clarified? Well, the main thing is or what? if we do declare an emergency, what are the ramifications? How how does that affect other things that we do? Um, if we can put a timeline on the ordinance to expire like cindy i wouldn't recommend you you did that but i will find out if we can put a a, a sunset on an ordinance um and i think that's it 
Okay. Well, I think we should get those uh, uh, questions answered and sit down. And we really have a chance to discuss this in much detail. I think the, the uh, uh, workshop will provide a, a better venue uh, for that. To and as long, as long as there, the county has a state of emergency until the end of January, you know, it, it would only come into play if someone above us, the county or the state, had not declared an, a state of mm -hmm. emergency, but we we thought we needed it to continue locally. Right. So, Mayor, okay. yeah. question for you. Is this sure. something that we need to go on ahead and move to place on the agenda in December? Would you like to have that happen? Well, there is a motion that needs to be taken. Uh, and I think... Uh, Ken's ready. With, with, a, with, with amendments or with questions to be asked at the next at the next uh, workshop. Uh, and I don't believe we're mandated to bring it to the next meeting. We may opt to delay it because we didn't have satisfactory answers or there might be further questions that need to be addressed. Mr. Mayor? But moving it on, Ken, go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I think timing is kind of important here because the, uh, the current order really expires December 31st. Uh, the one that um, replaces it until the end of January is much more restrictive. Uh, right now, we can just call Zoom meetings whenever we want. Um, so I, I'd certainly like to see this uh, uh, being uh, considered at the December 14th regular meeting, uh, but we will have prior chance to discuss it and review it at the work at the coming workshop. Um, I, I think that would be the best way to go. And if we can't resolve uh, the issues that we have with it on the 14th, we can just either table it or, or defeat it. Um, so I would move to place the proposed ordinance to amend Title Three, Chapter 31, entitled Administration, Departments, Boards, and Commissions to add a new section uh, 31.02 entitled Emergency Declarations to the Code of the City of Saugatuck on the, the December 14, 2020 regular council meeting agenda for action. Second. A second. Chris second it. Okay. <laughs> Motion by Truster. Seconded by Peterson. Any further discussion? We have a roll call vote, please. Truster? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Beckon? Yes. Okay, so our next agenda item, uh, purchase of a new patrol car. Karen? Uh, first off, my very first paragraph, I have a typo. It's the 2015 SUV that has 119,000 miles on it and is having issues. Uh, we, we discussed at the workshop this replacement uh, and determined we did want a white one to continue our separate identity from the county. Uh, the 2015, it's in regular service now and with that many miles on it and starting to have mechanical issues, it, it does need to be a reserve vehicle for when, when there's an extra reserve officer on like the holidays and so forth when we have extra deputies on. Uh, the state bid was 31,544 and Barbara Ford did meet the state bid. And the new model will be a Ford Explorer Interceptor, same as the old ones, except it'll be a 2021. Um, the budget for the vehicle was 40,000. And after we get the car, there's a lot of equipment that goes into it in an aftermarket. And it's quite likely that that full cost of the aftermarket stuff will run around 12 or 13,000 uh, by the time you, you add the radios and the cage and the decals and, and all that stuff. So I did want you to know that you probably have to do a budget amendment eventually. Uh, 
the the lead time on getting this vehicle is two to three months. And any questions? Quick one, uh, Karen. I noticed on page fifty-seven the uh, the quote for the new vehicle. I believe it still has the box for the vehicle color. I, I don't know if that's something you just do verbally with the, um, with the with the dealership, or if it needs to be documented somewhere that we actually want white. Um, under the options, it says Oxford white clear coat. And I will make sure of it before we press the button. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. Is that I, good, Scott? You're looking at this at the county bid. I put the county in there just to show that it's a, it's identical to the county. But oh, the first, okay. The first okay. Was, is what our what our vehicle is. Okay, I understand. Thanks. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. No problem. No All problem. Right. And, any other questions? Now, Mayor, this is Garn. Yes. Move to approve. Move to approve purchase of a white police interceptor utility SUV from Barbara Ford for a total purchase of thirty-two thousand nine hundred and ninety-four dollars. A second. Is there a second there? Second. Second by Scott. So we have a motion by Garnett. Second by Scott Dean to uh, approve the uh, motion to purchase a new police cruiser, white in color. Please call a roll. Lewis? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Trester? Yes. Beckon? Yes. Yes. Uh, and just, just a, a point of reference, uh, the city maintains a, a motor pool fund that we make monthly uh, donations into for uh, future equipment and vehicle purchases. So that's, uh, this money is thought out, planned and budgeted for. Another point of interest is when we, uh, and, and just to bring everybody up to speed and maybe Chris and Ken wanna add on this, is that when we, uh, when we joined the uh, Allegan County Sheriff's Department, city manager at that time put in a, uh, we were supposed to, there's a uh, split of assets between the two communities, including vehicles. Those assets weren't split on a timely basis, but the city manager at the time put in a uh, grant request uh, because uh, to, to accumulate some funds with the state of Michigan because this was a joint venture between two different governing agencies. Hence, we received a, a grant, I think it was like 150 or $160,000 of which we purchased the, the three white police vehicles. So that's why they all came all at once. And uh, so that was uh, some pretty good foresight by uh, Kirk at the time. Uh, just, just thought that might be a, a, of interest to uh, to council people who weren't uh, aware of that. So uh, moving on, our next agenda item, uh, Milt, uh, Milfoil Advisory Group Membership Amendment. Karen? Uh, the Milfoil Group met for the first time um, two weeks ago on Wednesday, and Scott Dean was able to join the group. And Scott has a, um, a background that he, he works for Eagle and was able to contribute in a way that the committee thought would be advantageous. So uh, Councilwoman Lewis recommended that she came off the committee and that Scott came on and the motion here will amend the original resolution to have Scott added and Garn come off. Um, on a personal note, I, I hope Garn continues to come to the meetings because she asked questions in such a way that I can understand what the Brainiacs are saying. So that's that's my comment. I hope Garn continues coming, but I, I think Scott will make a great addition to the committee. Okay. Uh, would someone like to present the motion, please? Yeah, Chris? I'll make a motion. Go ahead, Holly. Hi. I was. Oh. Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, 
approve amending resolution 201026B by adding Scott Dean to the Eurasian Water and Milfoil Advisory Committee and removing Garnett Lewis. Second. Motion by Leo, second by Stanton. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? If not, can I have a roll call vote, please? Leo? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Dean? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Truster? Yes. Beckett? Yes. Uh, motion carried unanimously. Uh, thanks for stepping up, Scott. Appreciate it. Uh, next order of business. Uh, extension of the city uh, employment of our uh, interim city manager. Karen, you want to introduce this? Please? Um, when I was, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was first approached to see my willingness to work for the city of Sagatuck for this interim period, I said I could only work until December 1. My husband and I had some travel plans, but as with everything this year, our plans changed. So if it's the council's desire, I can stay on until the end of January. Okay, uh, a week and a half or two weeks ago, uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Lewis and myself uh, met with, with Karen, uh, anticipating that her, her uh, term was ending here December 1st. And we started discussions about continuing her employment with the city. Thus, we have a uh, extended agreement in front of us this evening uh, to extend her employment uh, with a termina termination date of uh, close of business on January 29th, 2021, uh, with an option for her to uh, uh, leave employment uh, in the event a, a city manager, new city, when the new city manager is hired. Uh, so any questions for Karen on this? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I would like Mayor, to make, go ahead, Holly. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve uh, the First Amendment employment agreement between the city of Sagatuck and Karen Doyle Holman. It's a second. It's Lewis. Okay, we have a motion by Leo, uh, seconded by Lewis to improve the uh, uh, employment agreement uh, as presented. If no further Discussion, can we have a roll call vote, please? Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Dean? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Truster? Yes. Beckin? Yes, yes. And so Karen, uh, welcome, we appreciate it. When we first met, it was kind of unsure whether uh, what your intentions were, but uh, uh, we're, we're glad that uh, you've, uh, you're on board with us again for the next two months, so. Thank you very much. I thank you for your confidence in me. And I do want to say I have really, really enjoyed it. Your staff is wonderful. They, they're they so helpful to me. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to a couple more months in Saugatuck. All right, all right. Uh, moving on, our next agenda item, uh, a professional services agreement regarding Campbell Road improvements. Baron. Okay, Campbell Road improvement. This uh, professional service agreement between Fleece and Vandenbrink and the city of Zagatuck is for the project between McVee, McVeigh Drive and Park Street, Ferry Street. Uh, consists of replacing the six inch water main with an eight inch water main. Uh, crush, reshape, and resurface the road between McVeigh and approximately 400 feet west of Park Street. And then the 400 feet west of Park Street to Park Street will be a complete reconstruction, including subbase and under drain. Uh, this project will be split with the city of Douglas. And as with the construction portion of it, uh, the engineering fees will be split. Sagatuck's portion is 17,200. Uh, this design agreement is a little bit different than 
what you've seen since 2009 when you had another split project with Douglas. Uh, so I just wanted to point out why it looks a little bit different, but uh, there was a lot of back and forth, I understand, in 2009 to work out this agreement between the two cities and Fleece and Vandenberg. And so we've used that as a template to do this agreement. Any questions? My understanding that this will be on Douglas's agenda at their next council meeting? Their first meeting in December, they will have it on their agenda. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion on the, uh, uh, a motion on the uh, proposed uh, uh, service agreement, construction and uh, service agreement with Fleece and Vandenberg for Campbell Road? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Chris. I move to approve the professional services agreement between the city of Sagatok and Fleece and Vanderbrink Engineering for the Campbell Road improvement. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Peterson, a second by Trester. Uh, are there any further questions? If not, Mayor, I just, have... yep, yes, sorry, sorry, real quick. Garnett. No yep, problem. Just caught, nope, I just caught on page 71. Um, Obviously, we'll need to change the name of mayor there so it can be signed appropriately. So, point that out for Aaron. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, when, just for clarification, when did we decide exactly when we'll start this project? I know there was discussion about when Douglas would be able to start the project after their fiscal year, July. Um, on our end of things, what are we hoping as, you know, just to let people know when this might start? Well, typically that's part of the, uh, the uh, project overview that the engineers will work out. Uh, they'll make some determination, typically in the past what they've made determinations on is uh, availability of contractors, availability of uh, materials, uh, how, how close to the summer season we get, uh, I think that'll kind of be, it'll work out in the details, I guess, in the coming months, whether, and then when it's presented to us, I mean, it could be presented to us to start in July and we might say, hey, there's no way, we'll have to put it off to the, to, to the fall. So there is, you know, there is some uh, discussions that'll go on through this, you know, through the process. I don't know if that helps you or not, but that's typically how I've seen them sure. uh, come, come through in the past. We usually are kept pretty well up to speed on them too. So uh, um, I guess that's about all I can share with you. I don't, anybody else have any comments on that? Okay, uh, can we call the question please? Vote? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Peterson? Yes. Tresser? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Beckin? Yes. So the uh, motion's approved unanimously. Next agenda item uh, regarding Wicks Park Banshell design and construction phase services. Karen? Uh, at your workshop, you saw the prices for the two different designs, uh, the homage to the big pavilion was would have been a lot more expensive than what we were prepared to pay. And another point was that, I should say that we had budgeted to pay. And another thing was that every time there was maintenance on it, there would probably have to be special ordered parts because it was so custom. Uh, so city council, was leaning toward going to the simpler design. And John Moxie did prepare a budget for the complete scope of engineering from design through construction. And it includes the um, topography of the whole park and so forth too, not, not just the band shell. Uh, the amount 
quoted is 32,800. And it seems to me like we're going really fast on this, but we, we do need to go fast on it so that we can have a, a spring construction. So any questions? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Chris. Um, going back to the discussion we talked about with the kind of iconic um, gazebo, as well as the bathroom, I'm guessing that this is looking, as we talked about, this would be including the, this, this um, taking out the bathroom, as well as putting in the new uh, fan shelf. Is there any point to be made now or later if we should try to find some way to incorporate that painting that is there, um, whether we move it or we replicate it? Uh, would that be any part of this or would we need to add that to that if the council would agree? If it included replication? I don't think it did. No, the, the agreement did not. Um, and it did not include, well, the, the bidding would include demolition if you decided to demolish it. Um, I think we should discuss that, but I don't think it needs to hold up this agreement to start the design of the van shell itself. Thank you. That's what I wondered. Isn't Go Mr. ahead, Mr. Holly. Um, isn't the aren't the bathrooms a separate project from the van shell? Definitely. Okay. Okay. Mr. That's how I that's how I uh, look at it uh, myself, but uh Mayor, comments just for clarification then when we talked to john moxie he said we'd have to look at both the band shell and, and putting it in as well as the bathroom because of the drainage issues so for clarification i thought this had in it uh demolishing the restroom but maybe i'm wrong if i am that's fantastic and put it off till another time well uh, it's included in karen's overview demolition of existing restroom building along with a uh, removal of a small number of trees. So right. that must have been how she interpreted also. So I, I stand corrected. It looks like this is uh, looking into the preliminary design phase. Um, you can see representatives going through that also. Construction phase. But I, you know, yeah. I don't know what to, what what I I, I kind of agree with Karen. We can move forward with this, get more clarification on that. Uh, that's a very small small part of this this project. Yeah. Mayor, uh, also a good idea that if you're going to tear down the restrooms, you have a plan to replace them too. So mm -hmm. even if they're temporary, that they don't obviously going to be new ones. So uh, yeah, Mayor, open this up is further Garn. discussion. This is Garn. Motion to approve the authorization to proceed with design and construction phase services with Flyas and Vandenbrink and authorize the mayor to sign the authorization document. Second. Any other questions or comments? Uh, mayor, Ken? yes, I do. Um, maybe for Karen. Um, with this uh, $32,000 expenditure, was that included in their estimate of the $180,000 for the entire project? No. The, the $180,000 was for the band shell itself. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Now, can we have a roll call vote, please, Aaron? Lewis? Yes. Leo? Yes. Dean? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Trester? Yes. Second. Yes. Uh, so we'll we'll get this uh, get this band shell rolling on the design stage. We got a pretty aggressive uh, time frame on this, so uh, it's important to keep keep moving forward. Again, I think some of the uh, minor uh, parts of this project, such as a demolition of the restroom. Uh, at least from a cost standpoint, uh, we, we, we can work those details out as we as we proceed. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I'm going to walk back my 
my comment to Ken that the 180,000 quoted before did not include the engineering. Um, I want to check on that. I'm going to change my answer to I don't know. So I will check on that and make sure that I gave you the correct answer. All right. Yeah, thank Maybe. you. I, I, I believe that's really important because um, you know, this project is creeping up there. If, if it's not, if the 32K is not part of the 180K, now we're way over 200K and, and climbing because there'll be other costs associated with this as well. Correct. Okay, moving on to uh, the next agenda item. Uh, the MERS high plan. Uh, so we need an a adoption of an agreement addendum. Uh, Karen, you just, I guess you can introduce it or turn it over to Peter when you see fit. I'm going to defer to Peter. Okay, um, welcome everybody. Basically what this is about, this is a housekeeping item for MERS who handles all the functions and fiduciary responsibilities for the defined benefit slash hybrid program that the city has for the full-time employees. Um, MERS is basically making, they have 800 different units of governments where they each, everybody has their own little trust with them. And they're basically, MERS wants the practices of all their local units. They wanna have that in writing. And that's basically what this says is just an addendum. We're not changing how we've handled anything since I've done it since 07. Um, it's basically this housekeeping that MERS is on the same page as the city is on, as how, what numbers are turned in and hours are turned in for base wages to only for our employees. So I don't know if anybody has any particular questions. Peter, this is different from uh, the, uh, the transfer or the change of, of vendors, so to speak. On the, that's that's on the correct. Other this one. Is, so so yes, we have a, two, totally we have a two phased two phased uh, retirement plan for employees. Correct. So this is totally separate. Um, the other one was a 457. This one is what the MERS referred to as to a hybrid plan, which basically has like the old style um, defined benefit slash defined contribution, which some people will also refer to as a 401k. And that's what this one pertains to. It has nothing to do with the 457, where we, where, which is the first of January, we're going to transfer all that into the MERS program also. And basically, it's housekeeping for, for the MERS on their standpoint. So employees say, hey, you know, my W 2 wages say I made this much money, but MERS only, my benefit is only being calculated on this. And MERS wants to have that in writing on both sides, which currently they, don't have what the city and so they're making it all their units of government fill out these addendums so it specifically states what what is the definition of wages okay okay so do, do we have a, a motion uh sure mayor this is garn sure sure move to approve the michigan employees retirement system hybrid plan adoption agreement addendum Second by Second. Leo. Okay, so we have Leo. a motion by Lewis, a second by Leo uh, to approve the uh, uh, Michigan Employees Retirement and Hybrid Plan Adoption Agreement as presented. Any further questions? If not, uh, have the roll, please. Lewis? Yes. Leo? Yes. Dean? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Trester? Yes. Beckin? Yes. Okay, moving on this evening, uh, we have no consent agenda. Uh, this is the uh, second opportunity for the public to address council. Uh, they can address council on any uh, item they, they wish. Uh, as previously, please limit your comments to three minutes. Identify yourself with your name and your community of residence. I see Mr. Fox out there, recognize him. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, maybe a light moment to, you know, get close to the end of your meeting going into Thanksgiving, but there is actually a point to this. Uh, those of you who, and I'm not really one of them, but if you spend much time on local Facebook stuff, you've seen over the past, whatever it is, three or four days, news that the, that the sign, and I realize this is outside of your purview as the city council, Saugatuck, but I think it's a cautionary tale, that the sign that had graced the uh, northernmost end of Douglas on Blue Star Highway, uh, which had been put up, I'm guessing, roughly two weeks ago, kind of an obnoxious little sign with solar powered flashing LEDs that greeted you as you crossed the bridge and headed into Saugatuck. Uh, that that sign, as I say, lasted for about two weeks. And then I think earlier this week, it was taken down. If you hadn't seen it, it's worth I have a copy. It's worth a look. And I'm gonna put it up in front of my face so it's much more interesting than my face. There it is. That's the sign that greeted you when you went into Douglas. It may be showing up backwards, by the way, I can't tell because of the screens and so forth, cameras and so forth. To try and explain exactly what a driver was coming up against on Blue Star Highway when they exited the bridge. Now, all of us who dealt with that nightmare over there kind of know what that deal was about. But imagine you're one of the people from Chicago or Cleveland or wherever, our summer visitors who came up against that. I mean, it's almost panic inducing. It's, it's, it's so bizarre. Um, I was actually way back, went to a council meeting in Douglas when they came, when they were right up against the process of approving the alterations they made to Blue Star, to the Blue Star Highway. <clears throat> my impression, I could be wrong, but my impression was not a great deal of thought went into that. It was pushed by one individual. Everybody did a kumbaya and looked at pretty pictures of trees alongside Blue Star Highway and said, let's do it. And before anybody knew it, and including a lot of people in Douglas, before anybody knew it, we have what is in place there now. So to me, the cautionary tale for all of us really especially as it relates to infrastructure as important as the Blue Star Highway is to this locale, that all due consideration and time and thought and creativity be applied with a constituent, substantial constituent input before any kind of changes that can take an infrastructure item as important as the Blue Star Highway and render it this bizarre, this dangerous, and quite honestly, likely to be ultimately reversed or, or changed somehow, it's gonna to have to be. I think that relates to what's gonna ever, whatever the solution is on Park Street and so on and so forth. So as I say, it's only a cautionary tale. Uh, take your time. Don't change really important stuff on the fly. Not that any, not, I'm not suggesting any of you are so oriented, but somehow it happened in Douglas and those are, they're good people over there. I know many of the people who were involved, they're very good people, but somehow caution went out the window or a vision became a mirage. I don't know, but it can happen. So thanks for, thanks for listening. Okay, thanks for your comments. And yeah. uh, anyone else? Attendants would like to address council. You see anyone out there, Aaron? I'm not seeing anybody. I'm not. Okay, all right. Thank you, so we'll move on. We have no communications this evening. Uh, boards and commissions and committee reports. Uh, nothing listed, listed, but we can kind of can uh, run through them a minute. Ken, I think you wanted, we're gonna make a couple Comments regarding the Milfoil meeting? Uh, the Milfoil group did uh, meet a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it, we de definitely have a good group with a lot of uh, very experienced and talented people on board. Um, we agreed that the first task was going to be evaluate what is the best approach to uh, controlling the Milfoil, 
we have a number of options. There's herbicides, there's cutting and harvesting. Uh, there's a thing called diver assisted suction harvesting, which is kind of an interesting concept. Um, there are weevils who eat milfoil foil, uh, that are a possibility, although we can't identify a weevil maker at the moment. Uh, and then dredging, that if you made the water a lot deeper, the uh, milfoil wouldn't grow. Um, you know, some of these are, pra are, are practical, some of these are impractical, some of them are very costly. Uh, so we're going to move forward in evaluating all this. Um, uh, our next meeting actually is this coming Wednesday, and Karen has put together a, a very good uh, um, uh, panel of uh, experts, of, of consultants and um, vendors, contractors, I should say. And she's also done some research to contact uh, our neighboring communities to see what, if anything, they've done that's been successful or not in, uh, in controlling this. We've also talked with uh, Douglas, and they're very interested in partnering with us uh, next year is they're committed to go ahead with their um, uh, herbicide treatment on their side of the bridge. And uh, we may be able to benefit by using the same contractor and getting a discount uh, in that regard. Uh, so as I say, our next meeting is this coming Wednesday and uh, uh, we're pretty excited that we can, uh, we'll have, we can move forward on this and come up with some good recommendations. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Uh, do have anything from planning this evening? Okay. Anything from Historic Commission? Didn't meet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Cal Lake Sewer and Water did meet. Uh, it was basically going over just uh, uh, operational related items, uh, storm damage, uh, power power interruption, which really causes havoc with the with your uh, lift stations. And in fact, we lost complete power to the wastewater treatment plant uh, for about 16 or 18 hours. Fortunately, we have a big a battery backup system built in. It's not a bad battery, but a, a big generator system at the wastewater treatment plant and at several of our other key uh, infrastructure locations. Uh, a couple of items we are working on with our, uh, our attorney is uh, reviewing parts of our employment uh, uh, manual in the area of uh, paid time off versus uh, forfeiture of paid time accrual and uh, reviewing our uh, holidays and our holiday uh, pay for uh, the employees who are called in on, on, on those holidays. Uh, that's all we have from Cal Lake. Uh, if I miss anybody, anybody have anything else to add? Mayor, yes. uh, the, re the recycling committee met sure. this morning. And uh, once that uh, recording is up, I'll make sure everybody gets a copy. We had a, a, a very, very pleasant conversation with Jack Brown, who's the new representative from Republic Services. He was excellent. Um, and I think everyone will enjoy it. It's about probably 45 minutes of discussion with Jack. We had about eight questions for him um, as far as how uh, Republic can assist us in educating uh, constituents. Um, and he was, he was absolutely wonderful and referred us to their page, which is specifically called recyclingsimplified.com. It's got some great educational materials. And then uh, I will also post, we are uh, kind of meeting is kind of a, a I should say loosely with uh, folks from um, the Recycling Project, which is a national organization. We're gonna be chatting with them about some pos possible uh, funding support for putting out materials. So I'm still on my mission to get as much of this paid for as I can. Um, so stay tuned on that. So that's it, very good okay. meeting. All right, thank you, Garnett. Hey, w one question I think Barry might've brought this up in the past and maybe that's on their website is the uh, calendar with proposed recycle pickups. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. That was pretty helpful to me. Make sure that I didn't miss a Monday putting a sky blue pickup uh, out by the road. I will check. So uh, that was very helpful. So even if maybe the city could come up with something along that route, make it available, I think it'd be helpful. That'd be great. Okay, cool. thanks. Uh, I guess that ends our board and commission reports. Go to council comments. 
uh, I guess I'll just call on each council person. Uh, Christine? Yes. Peterson. Um, thank you. At the workshop, I brought up the issue of the erosion of, of Oval Beach. And obviously, it's not just uh, our beach. It's all around the, the lakes. Um, and I sent a couple of informational pieces to both Karen and Mark. But since then, another one has come out in Bridge, Michigan, which said that South Haven, uh, Benton Harbor and St. Joe have made requests to the um, Army Corps of Engineers to look into replenishing. And I have no idea what it would be like to find out about that, but it seems like if our neighboring communities are doing something like that, we should at least be part of the discussion. I have no idea whether it's a mayor to mayor call or a city manager to city manager call, but I think it would be worthwhile to take some time to look into that. Good idea. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll uh, talk with with Karen on that. Uh, typically, the bleach beach replenishment comes with a dredging project uh, associated to the the harbor or the channel. So that's the last time we had uh, Oval Beach and areas replenished. I believe that was three three years ago. And so I don't know if that if their projects are tied in also to some type of a, a dredging, even though you wouldn't think you dredge with high water, but they continue to do so. Uh, but we'll check on that. I think that's a good idea. Uh, Holly? Um, I just want to wish everybody a safe and happy Thanksgiving and uh, no comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Lauren? Um, I just wanted to make mention of how great the Christmas lights look downtown. 100% um, improvement, improvement from last year. They look amazing. And I know it was just a huge boost to the morale downtown having those lights on. So big thanks to Chris and all of your efforts on that. I think it looks fantastic. Um, otherwise, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. All right. Thank you. Scott? I'd also like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. and. Um, would also urge everyone to take the next couple nights off from cooking and maybe uh, get some takeout from some of our local restaurants. I think they would really appreciate it. I know their staffs have been having a tough year. So uh, there's some great offerings at some of our local restaurants for takeout. So, uh, so get away from the cooking for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good call. Good call. Garnett? Yeah, um, just really quickly, um, I know we won't be meeting again in what, probably two weeks. So um, I'd like to request that we make sure we're incorporating our new members on the board into boards and commissions. So if we could review um, city council representation on the boards and commissions soon, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ken? Sure, um, I'll start off as the uh, pandemic nag and point out that uh, uh, Saugatuck is now experiencing about 69 cases of COVID. Douglas is 32. That's really, you know, you remember over the summertime, we were really thrilled that we had like nine or 10 cases. It's really hypnos. And I think we got to redouble our efforts to continue to urge people to, uh, to obey the rules. Um, I think by and large, that's happening in, in town. Um, but man, this is, get, this is getting to be pretty bad. Um, then on a lighter note, I'd echo uh, what Lauren said about the downtown lights. Um, they look great. And we have Chris to thank for, for pulling that off. I mean, she, she was out on the streets for hours. I know that because she'd keep calling me and say, you got to come check this out. And uh, did a great job in working with our contractor uh, to give us a great look. Um, as well, I think uh, we should recognize Sean Steele uh, for we have our huge tree in Coughlin Park for yet another year and Sean still graciously works on that at, at no cost to us to help get that put up. And uh, so it really looks great. Not to mention the light show that he has on uh, Old Pike, uh, uh, the Old Pike property. I mean, it's wonderful. Uh, I've always thought that I'd like to encourage um, all of the citizens of Saugatuck to light up and, and we could become a, a destination for people looking to see holiday lights. Um, that'd be great. I mean, some stores like Kindle particularly are really doing a great job. Um, so that's all I had to say other than happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Okay, thanks. I'd like to echo the same sentiment regarding the lights. Town looks great. 
Uh, I know our, our employees, our depleted department, a uh, public works department really, really hustled to uh, work on uh, uh, our parks. And uh, uh, so our, our, our thanks to them. And of course, my favorite light is the iconic star on, on Mount Ballhead. Uh, that's been up there for, well, as long as I can remember. So uh, it, it, it's really a pleasure to see that every year. That's a great tradition. So that being said, on behalf of the city of Saugatuck, I'd like to wish all our citizens a thanks and safe Thanksgiving. We have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, please. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Trester, second by Lewis uh, to adjourn the meeting. Uh, roll call vote, please. I could take the liberty if you don't mind first. I keep getting this question a lot about the recycling. It's up on Very our website good. under news and notices. And it also went out in the email newsletter today, which if anybody asks, if you go to our homepage, there's a sign up for that uh, newsletter that goes out with that kind of stuff. And I am in the process of starting a new website. That said, That's cool. Trester? Good job. Yes. Stanton? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Leo? Yes. Dean? Yes. Beckon? Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Very good. Hey, Aaron, did you say that's on the news page? News and notices. Yep. News and notices. It's a very difficult to navigate. Yes. It's yeah, not, I know. Uh, I know. It's, it's not an ideal way to share the information, but the interface we're using is extremely archaic right now and it's okay. even very simple tasks on our current website interface are um, kind of a struggle okay what i think we'll, once we get that facebook page up for recycling i think i'll just put a link to that and that'll be easy for folks to find they won't have to go digging for it okay i can also get a pdf oh that's cool thanks thank you yep. good night everybody happy thanksgiving good night everybody good night